today we are going to be talking about dilations and how dilations, which we've already learned about, are going to apply and give us these similar polygons. When we talked about our transformations unit, we talked about rigid motions and how translations, reflections, rotations, all preserved congruency. But then we had one transformation that wasn't a rigid motion, that was dilation. And that dilation, we said, created these similar figures. And that's what we're going to look at more today. So we are going to start by dilating our triangle, DOG, by a scale factor of 5 halves. So remember, a scale factor is a multiplier. So what we're going to do here is we're going to multiply each coordinate, that's the x and the y coordinate, by 5 halves. And 5 halves is just 2.5. And that's going to give us our new image triangle cat. So we've got to start with our original coordinates. D is at a negative 4, 2. O is at a negative 4, negative 2. G is at a negative 1, negative 2. We're going to multiply negative 4 times 5 halves or times 2.5. If you're not sure how to get this, make sure that you have your calculator out and you are making these calculations with us. So negative 4 times 5 halves should give you a negative 10. If you didn't get negative 10, double check. Make sure that you put parentheses around your 5 halves or just use 2.5. 2 times 5 halves is going to give you 5. Negative 4 times 5 halves is going to give you negative 10. Negative 2 times 5 halves is going to give us a negative 5. And t, negative 1 times 5 halves is a negative 2.5. Negative 2 times 2.5, or yeah, times 2.5 is a negative 5. So our new object here, our dilated triangle, C is at a negative 10, positive 5, A is at a negative 10, negative 5, and T is at a negative 2.5, so halfway between 2 and 3, negative 5. So there is my dilated triangle, creating that similar figure. And we talked about this before, similar figures are figures that have the same shape, but they are different sizes. So it still looks like the same kind of triangle, it's still a right triangle, but we have one small one and one larger one. If figures are similar, then their corresponding angles are congruent. And their corresponding sides are not congruent because if the angles were congruent and the sides were congruent, which we've learned about, we would have congruent triangles. But because they're similar, they have the same shape, which is why they have the same angles. Since they have different sizes, their sides are going to be proportional. So for that proportional relationship, we have congruent angles. When I look at our statement here, we have angle D and angle C corresponding. Therefore, angle D is congruent to angle C. O and A are in the same spot, so angle O is congruent to angle A. And last, angle G and angle T, so angle G is congruent to angle T. So that's easy. Corresponding angles are congruent. That's the same thing we did with congruent triangles. But now we have corresponding proportional sides. So what we're going to do, instead of the sides being congruent to each other, I'm going to write a ratio with them. So we see over here that we have DO is in the same spot as CA. Those two corresponding sides, DO, and CA are going to be written as a ratio. I'm going to compare the ratio of their sides. They're not congruent, but I'm going to create a ratio. My next two sides, we have the bottom. OG is in the same spot as AT. So OG is going to go over OT. When you write your proportions, it's really important that you're consistent. So since I put DO on top for the first ratio, I could have put it on top or bottom, but since I put it on top for the first ratio, I have to make sure that I put OG on top. 
because I'm coming from triangle DOG to triangle COT. You just have to be consistent. It doesn't matter which one you put on top and which one you put on the bottom as long as all sides from one triangle go on top and all sides from the other triangle go on the bottom. And that gives us our last set of corresponding sides. DG is in the same spot as CT. So the ratio of GD is the same to TC. That's going to give us the ratio of each of the sides. So whatever the ratio of these two sides has to reduce down to the same fraction as these two. Has to reduce down to the same fraction as those two. And that's what it means to be proportional. So in this case, the similarity statement lists all of the vertices in corresponding order. So whatever parts match up, just like how we wrote our congruency statement, it mattered the order in which we wrote the letters. It didn't matter how we wrote the first statement as long as the second one matched up corresponding. So in this example, we could say that triangle DOG, not congruent, but here's our similar, is similar to triangle CAT. This is the similarity statement. Again, that's only one of many different ways you could write that similarity statement. Once you pick the first triangle, there's only one correct corresponding answer to match. But there's lots of different ways I could have named that first triangle. If we dilate a figure by a scale factor that is greater than 1, then we are creating an, an enlargement. If we dilate a figure by a scale factor that's between 0 and 1, so a fraction 1 fourth, 1 third, 3 fourths, 2 fifths, any number that's between 0 and 1, then we are making it smaller and it's going to be a reduction. So in the example we just did, the scale factor that we had, that we multiplied by, was 5 halves. And that's equal to 2.5. 2.5 is greater than 1. And as you noticed, we had our original triangle, DOG. Our second triangle got larger, which is going to make this an enlargement. All right, one last question here. We have triangle tri is similar, not congruent, but similar to triangle map by a dilation. So we have two triangles. Remember, we just draw generic triangles. This really has no bearing on what it actually looks like. It could be an obtuse triangle. It could be a right triangle. And I drew two congruent looking triangles. We know they're not congruent. We know that they're going to be similar. But we draw them generic so that we don't create false misconceptions. So in our triangle TRY, we are told that TR has a length of 14, RY is 16, TY is 20, and in triangle MAP, AP is going to be 8. So the first part, use the given information to sketch a dilation. We sketched it and we labeled it already to identify it as a reduction or an enlargement. Now this is going to depend on your similarity statement because it could be a reduction or an enlargement depending on how it's written. It's saying that the original is TRY and we are dilating it to MAP. So this is my original triangle. Did it get bigger or did it get smaller? To determine that, we look at corresponding sides. Well, RY and AP are corresponding. So from going from 12 to 8, I am getting smaller. Therefore, because corresponding sides are getting smaller, that means that this is going to be a reduction. The second part, find the scale factor. So the scale factor is what did we multiply by? We had 16. What did we multiply by 16 to get 8? We're trying to find that scale factor. So to isolate the scale factor, we divide by 16. 8 divided by 16, that gives our scale factor is 1 half. 
again, that supports the fact that it was a reduction, because up here we said that if we dilate or multiply by between something between 0 and 1, 1 half is a fraction between 0 and 1, then it's going to be a reduction. So then the last thing is to find the missing sides. So this one's not too bad because it's 1 half. You can do 1 half. But if I have TR, TR is 14, so I take half of 14, and that's going to give us 7. So the corresponding side AM is going to have a length of 7. And likewise, we have on the bottom TY. TY is 20. We multiply that by the scale factor of 1 half, and that's going to give us our missing piece, MP, is going to be 10. All right, and that's it for this video.